Hey guys, welcome to another Heavy House tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up CryptoMat inside of Cycles 4D and then how to take that CryptoMat file and use it inside of After Effects. Here's a quick project that I built that we'll come back to later, but this right now is the original image. This is the CryptoMat file that was generated. And then from there, I use that to composite all of this stuff together just in After Effects and Post. So the original to this, really just using those mats as much as I possibly could. As you can see, I have this simple scene set up. It's five different objects, two spheres, a cube, person, and then the floor. Um, nothing special, it just has an HDRI lighting it. Important to notice that each material that I have has a unique name, square, person, ball one, ball two, floor, and that's going to be important when rendering with CryptoMat. Let's go into our render settings. I'm going to hit Command B or Control B on the keyboard. Bring up your render settings. Change the renderer to Cycles 4D. Click on the Cycles 4D. We're going to change this to GPU. You can do this. CryptoMat can be uh, GPU or CPU. If you are only rendering with CryptoMat, you can come over to the Render Elements tab and click on Object or Material. I like to do both. It gives you different selections, and I'll show you that when we jump over to After Effects. Important here, make sure that you set your file path. If you don't set a file path here, it is not going to save this file. Okay, with the file path set, we're going to come back to our settings, you know, uh, None of these settings really matter right now. Um, yeah, all this is fine. Uh, let's put a transparent background. Then if you were going to render out more elements like diffuse color, diffuse direct, all of these, you're going to need to come over to multi-pass. You're going to need to enable it. Then under the multi-pass button here, go down to post effects. You need post effects if you want these render elements to show up in your EXR file. In order to have the least number of files, I like to uncheck the first regular save image and only send everything into the multi-pass image. That way I'm only dealing with one file that has my beauty pass, my diffuse pass, my glossy, etc. It's all just done in one single place. And that's how easy it is to render out crypto mats. I'm going to hit render on this and then I'll jump over to After Effects and bring these assets in. Okay, we're in After Effects and we have, we're in After Effects now and I brought in both the CryptoMat. We're in After Effects now and I brought in the CryptoMat file plus the multi-layer. We're in After Effects now and I went ahead and imported the we're in After Effects now, and I went ahead and imported in the multi-pass layer. We're in After We're in After Effects now, and I went ahead and imported in the multi-pass layer. We're in After Effects now, and I went ahead and imported in the multi-pass image as well as the cryptomat image. 
We're going to grab the multipass image, drop it down here to create a new comp. Okay. And then we're going to grab the crypto mat and drop that over top. We're going to turn off the crypto mat for now with the multi layer selected. Go ahead and apply the extractor effect. You'll notice on my screen, I have this search box. This is FX console from video copilot. You can go over to videocopilot.net, look for FX console. It's a free download, highly recommended. It allows you to search all of your effects natively in after effects without having to drop down through the menu. So we'll go to extractor and apply that. You'll notice the image got really dark. It has now put it into a linear color mode instead of uh, sRGB, which is what it saves it in. So if you wanted to leave extractor on here, you could then apply the color profile converter effect and you will want to click linearize input profile. Now you have the same colors you were seeing before. And for all of these multipass, you do want to leave that on because this is the correct viewing. All of your multipass get saved as linear color profiles. So they won't combine correctly if you do not have them set to linearize with the color profile converter and you're working in sRGB. I'll get more into combining render passes together in another tutorial. With extractor on here, if you click in this gray bar, you can then choose what you wanna see. So diffuse direct, diffuse indirect. And so this is how you would combine them. So we're not too worried about this one. We're gonna focus on the crypto map. Let's turn that on. We're gonna see nothing. Again, we're going to apply crypto mat effect. And you see immediately we have all these different colors on each of our objects. Crypto mat also comes in as linear. So I do like to add on a color profile converter, click linearize input profile. I can just see the colors better. You don't need to leave this on uh, once you've done your mats, but for initially, it just helps me to kind of differentiate between them. If you click in this area on crypto mat, it brings up this box. You can choose what you want to see, either the crypto mat material mats or the crypto mat object mats. So currently we're looking at the crypto material. That means you're seeing each of the objects broken up by the material that they had applied to them. If you click on the crypto object, now they're broken apart by individual objects in the scene. So you'll notice something right away when I click this and that this one that the color is all changed, but also this guy who is broken up into multiple parts is all different colors. There are a couple objects that get broken up like this. So you'll have to test whenever you export and see how they're broken up. But most things that you're modeling won't get broken up like this. This is because this is a special Cinema 4D object. Now, how do we take advantage of this? So if we click on the crypto mat effect, we can come over here and just left click on any object and it immediately becomes white. If we hold down shift, you see this little plus, we can now select both of these together. And if we accidentally click on something and can add it, we can always hold down command or control and you can remove it from your selection. Next thing you do is come over to output. We don't need to see the colors anymore. We want to see the mat only for so just the mat for those spheres. And we're left with this. We're going to turn off the color profile converter because we don't really need that. And it will, once the mat only is applied, if it has some alpha information in there, like if something has depth of field, then this color profile will over crank those white values. So you don't want to leave that on whenever actually using it as a mat. So now if you come down here, we're going to duplicate our full image on the track mat. We're going to set this to from no track mat to Luma mat. Okay. No change at the moment, but now if we throw on a hue saturation and we go ahead and spin that around, you'll notice that we're able to affect the colors of just those two objects without affecting anything else. If we solo this layer, you'll see that the only thing we see are the perfect cutouts of those two spheres. 
So this is why crypto map is so powerful is that you get a map for everything in your scene immediately without having to select or put in every single object that you want to have a map for and also renders incredibly quickly. These do work in image sequences, so you can do this with full size animations. Here we are in the Cinema 4D file of the project that I showed you earlier. So I wanted to show you just a couple things that CryptoMat does that you don't have to worry about rendering out. One is, you can see here, this is just a plane. That plane is using displacement. So CryptoMat will see the displacement and render that out correctly. You don't have to worry about that. I'm also using a cloner in this scene as well as X particle trails and I have depth of field in the scene. So let's go take a look at how this rendered out. So this is what the render ended up looking like. I tried to make it as kind of dull as possible. Um, so we've got depth of field here on these little hairs or threads. The next thing we have is our crypto map. You can see that that depth of field is represented inside of our crypto map. Okay. This is the mountain mat. This is the mat for these spheres. For this geometry line that I put in here. Uh, this was actually, go back to Cinema 4D. This white line that you can see here, that is actually a polygon selection here. And I have two materials on this same piece of geometry. So we'll see how that came in in a second. So in this version, I have it set to the material, but if we went to object mode, all of this, the entire mountain scene would be all one mat. Here are the threads, and you can see here they're being occluded by the sphere back here, again with the depth of field. We have these other spheres. You can see the hairs cutting out here. original and then this is me stacking up the different uh, effects that I put on it. Obviously it wasn't that straightforward but yeah that's what, how it ended up. Okay so let's take a look at these crypto mats. Bring this in, we're going to apply the crypto mat. I'm going to go ahead and put the color profile converter on it just so that it's clear on your eyes. You can see that these spheres, each one is broken apart by the material. So if I click on here, it selects all of them. I click on here, it selects that material. Now look, look at it in object mode and compare the differences. I click in this area, drop down to object, hit OK. And you see the entire mountain is now all one solid color. And you'll notice that all of these which were the cloner inside of Cinema 4D are all now individual elements. So this can sometimes come in handy. Uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to click through things that have some opacity to them. So you just have to kind of uh, kind of click around and remove as necessary. But each of these cloner elements are diff considered different objects. So they each get their own unique mat. The threads in the front are different than the threads in the back because they are different objects from different XP systems. Now they're also, I gave them different materials, so they're also different here, but if you gave them the same material, then you could select them together. Inside of here, I did a lot of stuff. <laughs> the mountain here is set to Luma on the mat. I have the stripes with a hue saturation on them, being colorized, and then I have a glow on it. Uh, then I have an inner glow. I used Minimax, which is kind of fun. Set it to alpha, set it to minimum, brought it in, blurred it out a little bit, and then again, glowed it. This one's a little bit more like adding that kind of a hot white core to it is the idea. We've got the glow from the strings, which uh, the strings aren't visible at the moment, but I added this little glow by basically duplicating the strings or threads 
and then putting a Gaussian blur on them and again just a hue saturation. Okay, these spheres, I just have a curves adjustment and then this has a, again, a hue saturation change set to colorize and then I just masked out these different areas and feathered those in. So it kind of looked like they're, maybe they're reflecting something up here. doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but yeah. Okay, you've got the black spheres and then I added a little bit of color over top of that. The matte. Okay, here's the strings. Okay, the strings are really just a gradient ramp set from this blue color to white going here and then those are luma matting their crypto mat and then I it was coming in a little softer than I wanted so I went ahead and uh, stacked those on top of each other and then I put on a little color adjustment added a vignette and that's where we ended up. I hope this shed some light on using CryptoMat. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time.